Okay, guys. So in this video right here, we're going to be overclocking our Pi 3 system. I'm specifically doing this for the HyperPi image that, that was just dropped, the 128 gigabyte image that's out that I put out there. Um, this is totally optional. This is not anything required to have a playable image or anything. HyperPi by itself, you putting it together or getting the 128 gigabyte version that I, that I threw out there, you know, is very playable. This is not necessary, but it's kind of cool, kind of helps out with a few things. So we'll be doing a, a, a base overclock, not even going to be doing anything extreme. We're just going to do a base overclock. Uh, we're just going to be changing a few things with that. This is actually one of the easier tweaks that you could do. So this is more so for the guys who haven't overclocked before, or don't know how to overclock. This is probably one of the simplest processes there are as far as manipulating anything with an image or with your, your Raspberry Pi in general. Um, so this is very, very user friendly to do. Like, you know, that's nothing. If you're one of those types of people who just like want to grab an image, put it on their, their system, don't want to mess with anything, they don't want to figure it out, they just want to play games, this right here, you'll have no issue doing. Uh, it's just so simple. But it's so simple that, you know, some people just say, wait, what? It's one of those things where if you don't realize how simple it is, you might think it's difficult to do. So we're going to dive into that. Like I said, this is not necessary. It's not 100% needed. But I ran a few tests. You know, I don't want to say they're like the most scientific tests in the world. But I have noticed an improvement with, at, at the bare minimum, our HyperPi wheels here our display wheels. So I've noticed when I overclock that everything loads up a lot quicker and scrolls through a lot quicker. That was That's the main negative thing that people have to say about HyperPi is that it's so busy that it lags a little bit. And that's true, I can't lie about that. It does lag a little bit, but it's still a beautiful base image. It's a beautiful layout, you know, very playable if you're putting one together or if you're grabbing the 128 gigabyte image that I put out there for you guys, if you don't overclock it and you just keep it as is, it's, it's still playable. There's nothing wrong. But I did notice with, with these, these wheels on the displays that everything loads up quicker and it scrolls smoother. I did a quick little test. I recorded a video, I'm not uploading it. It's pretty boring, but, uh, what I did was I, I recorded, because I have two uh, SD cards with this image on it. One of them overclocked, one of them not. So I boot them both up, one by one, and I start at this screen. And as soon as I start my recording, I just press down. As soon as the video starts, starts up, I just keep pressing down. Keep pressing down. Every time it, it starts, I just kept pressing down. Just to, just to see. With the, the one that wasn't overclocked, some of these, they weren't loading up right away. With this one that's overclocked, it's the second you press down and go to the next wheel, they load up right away. It, it's not, you know, it's milliseconds type of thing. It's not crazy, but I did notice an improvement with it. That's why I'm putting this out there. I've made some, some little updates to the image that I put out. Just almost, you know, it wasn't intentional. It wasn't even planned. It was just me messing around with stuff. Uh, so I started tweaking some stuff with the ROM list with the artwork, some video snaps I re-recorded, and I do that for you know, a few reasons, but one of the reasons was there were some games that the, the, the video snaps were either incorrect or not working or weren't there to begin, you know, whatever. You know, nothing major. People might not ever even notice it, but I was just fixing a few little things, and I decided to do that and then, you know, add the power switch and whatnot. So with that said, if you're gonna do this overclock, we're keeping it at the base overclock. We're not gonna go extreme, but you have to realize even with the minor overclock, your system will run hotter. So it is heavily, highly advised that, you know, like mine here, I do have heat sinks and that's all I'm using to cool this, this bad boy at the moment. At bare minimum, that's what you want, heat sinks. And a little wire in there, that's just, that's just part of the power switch that I'm messing with, that, you know, the, the script that I have on there. Um, so you don't have to, that's not part of this. But they do make cases that have, you know, they're, they're 
cases that have cooling in it, you know, or cases with fans, so you can buy your own fan. You know, that, that's cool too if you really wanna, you know, make use of this. We're gonna be doing 1.3 gigahertz. If you go up to 1.35, you might wanna do a little more cooling than just the heat sinks. Uh, I ran it for about a half day yesterday at 1.35, had no issue. But with this, we're just gonna do it at 1.3. Um, going between 1.3 and 1.35, I didn't really see much of a difference other than the heat that was produced. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna stick to 1.3. So you're gonna do this at your own risk. Highly advise, make sure you're cooling your system at least with heat sinks, at least. So very simple process. We're gonna dive into it right now. Take a look. Boom. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this party started. So to begin, like I said, this is not 100% necessary, but it does make things a hell of a lot easier. I'm going to want to go ahead and download Notepad++. So the link to the, the website will be in the description if you want to download this. You could just use standard Notepad, but it's going to be a little more clunky to figure, figure out what you need to do. This makes it a heck of a lot easier. You download it, have it installed, it's going to take like a minute. It's not a big file, so very quick and easy. So make sure you grab this because that's what we're going to be using. Like I said, you don't have to use it. It just makes it a lot easier, and it'll make it easier for you to follow what we're doing here. So from there, you're going to need to take your micro SD card out of your Pi, put it in an adapter, or however you're going to plug it into your computer, Plug that bad boy in. Boom. We should get this nonsense. Continue without scanning. There ain't no problem with this. And then you should get this. Open folders to view files. Go ahead and open that bad boy up. So if you don't have all this, I don't know what the hell you're using to run RetroPie. It's got to be some kind of magic or something. But you should have this very small boot partition that has all this stuff. So... If you're not seeing this, you put in the wrong SD card or something. I don't know what's going on. But to begin with, we're going to want to go down to this config file. Highly recommended um, for you to make a backup of it. You know, copy it if you so choose. Paste it to your desktop um, or put it in a, you know, a folder with all your pie stuff, you know, whatever. Not 100% necessary, but it is nice to have a backup just in case. But we're going to go to this config file. Right click that bad boy, go to edit with Notepad++. You're only going to see that edit with Notepad++ if you installed Notepad++. So we're going to go ahead and open her on up. So it's going to be down here. You'll have, a, here, let me scroll this guy over. You're going to have line 44 and 45. Those are the ones that, that we want to worry about. Well, not really 44, but... You're going to know you're looking at the right thing if you see this. Uncomment to overclock the arm. 700 megahertz is the default. And then, it, you know, you have this. Arm frequency equals 800. That guy right there, the leader. Just get him out. Bye. Peace. Now, this right here, this is what we're going to copy and paste in there. This is going to be in the description. Um, so we're going to be... We're going to be Overclocking the arm frequency to 1300, GPU, GPU frequency to 5, core frequency to 5, SDRAM frequency to 5, and then our overvoltage and SDRAM overvoltage is going to equal 2. So go ahead and copy all this. Go ahead and make sure you're on 45 right underneath this guy. Paste her on in there. And... That's it. File. Save that bad boy. Close her on out. Boom, you're gone. So we just we just updated that guy. We got our overclock configuration in there. Uh, you know, the base configuration for overclocking. You can go to 1350, 1400, 1450, anywhere in between. I'm saying stick to 1300 for now. Um, and if you're doing 1300, at least make sure you have heat sinks because no matter what overclock you go to, your system will more than likely produce a little bit more heat. Um, if you go to 1350 or 1400, 
you know, you might you might want to get a fan or, or or a cooling case, something. You know, I ran my system for almost a half day at thirteen fifty. Played a lot of games, tested a bunch of stuff, did a bunch of little tweaks and whatnot, and I had no issue. Um, but I also noticed, like I previously said, between thirteen hundred and thirteen fifty, I didn't see a drastic difference. So I just wanted to play it safe, and I went back down to thirteen hundred. Um, but if you go higher and your system freezes or if 1300 just doesn't work, you know, all pies, you know, all pie threes aren't necessarily created equal. Some take to overclocking very well. Some don't. I've had literally, I don't even know how many, a lot of raspberry Pi systems and I've not overclocked all of them. I actually haven't overclocked a system in a while. Um, but out of all the ones I've done, I've never had an issue. You know, nobody really should, especially if you're sticking to the base that we're at. But if you go higher and you have an issue, just knock it back down a little bit. Or if it just doesn't work for you at all, just replace your your config file with the backup that you created. Now, doing this overclock, it's not going to magically make games that didn't work before now magically work. That's not what's going to happen. You could see some minor um, improvement with some games, but if there was a game that just didn't work or something that had like horrible sound issues uh, or graphical issues, like a lot of Nintendo 64 stuff, this is not going to correct that. Just letting you know that right now. This is not going to correct that. Nintendo 64 is just, it's, you know, the system's very capable of emulating Nintendo 64. It's just the emulator's not up to snuff at this moment. So, don't, you know, a lot of people think, well, if I overclock, maybe, you know, no, it's, it's not going to help that much with Nintendo 64. You can see some improvement, but like I said, if a game didn't work, it's just not going to help. It, you know, if it ran really crappy, the, the best you're going to see with the overclocking is that instead of it being really crappy, it might be, you know, crappy. I mean, I don't know what to say. So I don't think this is going to cause any kind of magical thing to happen for you. But like I said, I did see improvements with running the HyperPi image, scrolling through the display wheels and within the systems and whatnot. I did see a, a difference, millisecond difference, not magical, but a difference, noticeable. And it, 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 it just worked for me, so I figured why not share this. So hope you guys appreciate it. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, Throw them at me. Try my best to get back to everybody. And, you know, I will catch you guys next time. Thank you. Ba-ba-boom.